great to see you here again. My name is Luc de Custer, founder of the Custer Academy. And in this video, I'm going to look at what I call the 10-step approach to projects and the main tools that we are going to use during those different steps. But before we continue, don't forget to click on the subscribe button, click on the bell button, and every time we have a new video, YouTube will inform you about it. Let's first have a look at the project management process. We, as a project manager, we have to de define the project management process. Now, this may be strange that we talk about the project management process. A project is not a process, but we have a project management process, which is basically a set of process steps that we are going to do every time we have a project. And we start with project initiation, planning, execution, monitoring, control, and, and closing. So these are all the process steps that we have in the project management process. And we're going to have a look how we link those to what we call the 10 steps. But first, I want to describe what are the main things that we are going to do in each of those process steps. So let's have a look at the process steps and the 10 steps. First of all, we have the initiation, and in the initiation, we create the project charter and we identify the stakeholders. It's only a high-level identification of the stakeholders, but we already mentioned them, we already uh, identify them in the charter. Then we have the planning. Here we create the project plan and the necessary baselines, the plan that we will later use to create the deliverables of the project and complete the project. We have execution, and that's the moment where we start creating the deliverables. We start working on the project after approval of the plan, and we create the del different deliverables. During that phase, during that step, it's also very important to monitor and control. And here we create reports. We have change requests to verify if everything is going as planned. So we compare the work that we are completing with the plan, and we take the necessary actions when we see that there are variances. After execution and monitoring and control, the project ends, the work is done, but the project is not finished completely. We still have to do the closing. And the closing step is very important because here we're going to close all the outstanding contracts, all the outstanding issues. We look at as built plan, lessons learned, and we store knowledge in our knowledge management system. So let's now have a look at the first element, which is the initiation. What are the elements we're going to do in the initiation? We have here only two important processes. The first process is to create the project charter, and the second one is to identify the stakeholders. Like I said, the stakeholders we identify here, it's only at high level. These are the main stakeholders of the project. We create a charter, which is a high-level document which is based on the business case or a statement of work, and it's the driving document of the project. It's like a contractual agreement. We identify the stakeholders. We look at people and organizations. We look at people and organizations that have an interest in the project. And it's very important not to forget stakeholders. It can be very dangerous to forget some people, even if they are from less important for the project, due to the fact that you forgot them, they can create a lot of problems in the organization. Now, identifying stakeholders is an ongoing process. There are more processes we're going to look at when we deal with uh, stakeholders. It's very important to understand how important these stakeholders are. Second step is planning. Here we have more steps. In the initiation, we only had one step, create the charter and the identification of the stakeholders. In planning, we uh, create the project plan. Uh, we have to get the requirements and the scope. We have to decompose the project. Uh, we do that using the work breakdown structure. We identify activities and allocate resources. We estimate the duration and the cost of the activities. We schedule the activities, determine the start and the finish dates of these activities and the critical path. We level the resources, so we resolve issues that we have with resources. 
And based on this, we create what we call the schedule baseline. And once we know the schedule baseline, we can create the budget and the critical path position of the project. We come back to the critical path position later, but it relates to uh, how much flexibility we still have left after creating the schedule baseline. Then we complete the risk evaluation and we create the risk management plan. Once we go to execution, we uh, may decide not to start with the project. So there is a possibility that we, for example, don't uh, start with the project. If in case that happens, we immediately go to the closing step uh, because we still may have a lot of valuable information available after the planning. The first action, if we continue, would be a kickoff meeting. Uh, sometimes it can be done already uh, before we start with the planning, but typically once the plan is ready, we will have a kickoff meeting to share with everybody what is going on. We have the baselines that are created in the planning step to manage the execution. Uh, we're using those start and finish times to start working. Uh, that's the begin uh, situation. We create the deliverables. We measure performance related to schedule and cost. We evaluate and manage changes. We create reports. And of course, we also have monitor and control where we look at planning and execution, but just looking at it, it's not enough. We have to see that the deliverables are created according to the plan and according to their specifications. We do quality and risk reviews. We evaluate the schedule and cost performance that we use on value management. We identify issues, creep and gold plating. As a project manager, you have to identify the creep because it's very, it can be very dangerous. You have to avoid gold plating to reduce the cost of the project. We manage changes. You identify corrective actions and you communicate a lot with the stakeholders. Once we finish, we go to closing. Uh, closing, uh, let's say the plan is finished, execution, monitoring and control is finished. The project doesn't end there. Eh? We still have some elements to do. There is still a lot of activities to be completed. Now, what are those typical activities during closing? We may have to look at all the outstanding contracts. We have to resolve all outstanding issues, create as built plans, evaluate the project's success, have a con closing review, set up everything for invoicing. Very important if you're selling services that have to be invoiced, you have to see that the invoices are getting out and conduct knowledge management. All these things are done in closing. So that was basically the idea of the 10 steps. There are not all the things we don't talk about quality management, we don't talk about procurement, we don't talk about communication management. But when we look at the 10 steps, you already have a lot of elements that will help you to create a successful project. So that was it, the 10 steps of project management. Don't forget to click on the subscribe button, click on the bell button. And every time we have a new project, uh, sorry, we have a new video, YouTube will inform you about it. Thank you very much and I'm looking forward to seeing you in our next videos. Bye bye.